Um, I know it's been a while, but today I want to talk a little bit about how I trim the length on their legs. Um, I call it zoo booties. So today I'm going to trim Stewie's booties. So from this angle, it's a little hard to tell. Well, maybe you can, but he has a lot of, he's got a lot of hair that's hanging past his toes. He's just generally bushy in the leg area. And I find that if you don't keep up on the maintenance and there's tangles, the dog's not very happy because in Stewie's case, you know, he's a little sensitive about his toes and sometimes you have to tug a little bit if you have a mat like in between the toes, anywhere on the leg. I try to keep this area tangle free. Um, it does get dirty fast, touches the ground, collects a lot of debris. Like in fact, right here, he went outside and this is what I just found in his foot. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm gonna walk you through how I trim the length and give him zoo booties. The best way to go about it would be I check for knots and tangles out the gate before I even cut anything. Um, I do have a little bit of conditioner because I want to do a really good job to make sure all the hair lays nice. Um, I'm not too crazy. I mean, you know, he's not a show dog by any means. He's just my dog. Uh, but I happen to like to have a nice, you know, clean line when I make booties. Um, okay, so I think he looks pretty good there. And like, I believe I showed you in another video how I trim the paw pads. I'm not going to do that today, but this would be a good time to do it while he's calm and I'm already messing with his feet. I've already gone ahead and trimmed his other side, so I'll just show you one side. And I definitely don't go about it the way like professional groomers go about it. And sometimes I take them in to my local groomer just for a really good nail trim because the stew man has got dark colored nails and I'm a little nervous sometimes. Like I leave them long, I'll trim them. But when I like them shorter, I just pay the local groomer $5 and she trims them. But in any event, he's usually really bad for her. She gave him a bath one time and called me to pick him up. He was half wet. He was still wet. He was damp. Because they want to groom, you know, they groom the dog standing up. I groom mine laying down. So, okay. Um, if you can't tell, you probably can because of the change of scenery. I've recently moved my doggy day spot into a spare bedroom. So that's why everything looks different. So I have just my basic shears. Um, they have the safety end, so I don't poke the dog in the eye. They're by um, Chris Christensen. Uh, they were kind of expensive and I would buy them again. They have a lifetime warranty. I would pay the money because they're very sharp. I've cut myself. They have just a slight little curve, which in some cases, for what I'm doing right now, making the booties, the curve works to my advantage and in other cases where like I want to trim like Ellie's skirt I use a straight pair but I'm going to use those today so basically I do everything upside down oh he's got more more dead grass stuck to him beautiful um, I do everything upside down because I like it when they're nice and calm I've trained them you know, to lay here for me. <clears throat> so what I do is from about the knee level down, like when they have longer hair, 
um, you can push the length of the coat away. But I'm just concerned with this area right around the foot. And I think that the back are easier just because of the shape. So I usually just mist the hair a little bit um, to get all those flyaways down. I've already pretty much brushed them out, so I know he doesn't have any knots. Uh, I kind of feel like it adds insult to injury because he's not crazy about me messing with his feet to begin with. And then when there's a tangle, he just gets mad. All right, so I don't... I already have like a shape because I trim them the same way every time and I hope you got a good angle. Um, I'm shooting for, I want it to look like a little booty, like little snow booties. So I want a nice round shape to the hair. And in this case he's already got a good shape because I do the same thing all the time. But you can see where the where it's uneven, where he has some longer hair. I always trim from like the back of the leg back here as my guideline. And he's because this is what's gonna drag on the ground the most, is usually this area in the back of the leg. So if you can tell. Like, to me, this is way long. Like, he needs to lose, like, half of this length. Um, when he's standing upright, I don't want the hair to pop up, like, so his toes are exposed. So you want to be careful for that, and that's why I start trimming from the back around, because I can generally judge. If you've been doing it a little while, you know what length you like. Um, I like just at the floor length where the, when they're standing straight that the coat is just going to touch the ground or maybe pop up a little because it will grow out. I don't want it dragging on the ground. So I want to follow the shape of his foot and I'm going to start in the back and use utilize you know my curved shears and I want to make sure I get like all the layers. You can see how he's particularly like thick and I'm going to follow it around. And just comb it out to get an even. Um, I know from trimming him that I can get away with maybe an inch to two inches of hair here. And this might still be a little long, but I guess I'm okay with that. I rather have a little longer than a little shorter. And see, I'm able with my curved shears to follow it around where I already had that nice shape up at the top. And just brush it out a little and then continue to trim him from where I've started at the bottom and as I'm going along I'll just tighten my grip a little bit and it will allow me to see where his circle is and um, professional groomers <laughs> they think I'm crazy <laughs> but just they'll just become accustomed to grooming the length, grooming pretty much everything with the dog laying down. So, okay. So now when I tighten my grip, I can see I have a nice even circle. I usually come around and look at them from the front. You might not be able to see because of the camera angle, but I look at them from the front just to make sure he's even because I don't really like it when the hair pops up above the toes. See, I want it to cover the toes. I don't want to see his toenails. However, I usually get rid of some of his bulk by just snipping a little bit, of, like not the entire layer, but just like thinning out a little bit right above the toes. Um, because he's really not happy if you end up with a mat there. So we have successfully, I have made a booty. So we'll move on to the front paws. Um, I guess I really don't have to explain too much what I'm doing. It, it's essentially it's the same as the back. 
I'm going to just brush them out so I can get a good idea of the shape. And I just follow it around starting at the back. I like the, the back paws a little better. Uh, in his case, you know, his, his, his paws are gigantic, so it's easier for me to get a nice shape in the back. And check it from the front, make sure that he doesn't have any little stray hairs that overhang. We trim away the bulk right above the toes. Um, at, at this point, I would just stand him up and check to see if he needs a trim. Um, but usually, in my case, he really doesn't, or he does. I don't. I don't trim a lot because I've been doing the same thing for a long time. So he does. He looks pretty good. He, he never wants to stand. He always wants to sit up or lay down. He, he's a lazy type of guy. But I think that, you know, his booties are looking pretty good. I might just need to trim him a little so he's even to get those stray hairs. And he looks great. We'll see you next time. He's such a good boy.